Mr. Le Bung, Acting Director of the America's Department here in Vietnam, what's your job? Uh, my job is um, uh, on the Vietnam-American affairs. And I have to, you know, work on that for at least 20 years now. 20 years? Yes. Have you ever spent any time in the United States? I had been in the United States last year for three months. Did you think any differently of the United States after you spent time there than you did before? Right. What changed in your mind about the uh, country? You know, because the, before I hadn't been to the United States, therefore my impression is a little bit different. You didn't have time to talk to ordinary people. You didn't have time to visit to the families. But after, you know, you were in the United States, you visit the families and you talk to ordinary people, you have another impression of the United States. It's more balanced. What changed, though? What, what did, you, did you like what you saw, or were you bothered by what you saw in the United States? Um, I think that uh, it gave me the correct you know, images of the United States. For instance, before I heard about the, the family in the United States, uh, some of the sayings that the old people they are not very, uh, not care, you know, for very much in the United States. But when I was there, I visited some of the families that the father, the mother, and the children and the grandchildren living together. It may be typical, but there is some family that, in that kind. And then I visited some of the house for old people. They are very much cared for. That has changed my opinion. Other things maybe I've read already about, you know, people standing in the street, you know, uh, threatening you or something. Yes, I've met that uh, then it's not very, you know, dangerous to be in that situation as I imagined before. Where did you travel to in the United States? I had been most of my time in Washington. And then I traveled to California, San, Fra San Francisco, and then to New York City, to Boston, to Maine, to Philadelphia, and some other cities. Where were you born? In Vietnam? Yes. I was born in uh, Ninh Binh province. It's about uh, 100 kilometers south of Hanoi. How did you get into the foreign service in the first place? Um, you know, I was, you know, graduated from university in Havana, Cuba. And I learned, you know, English at that time. And then I was, you know, introduced to the foreign ministry as a young graduate, began in 1972. What, did you graduate from the uh, Cuban University in 1972? Yes. Where did, where were you during the early part of the war between the United States and Vietnam? Um, when I was in high school, you know, in 1961 to 60, uh, and after that, I graduated from high school. I volunteered to go into a youth brigade, they called youth brigade volunteer, serving, working on a road, repair the road. Of course, under the bombing anyway, in 1966 and 67. 
And after that, I was sent to study. In Cuba. So during the heavy bombing here, you were in Cuba. Yeah. But the early part of that, you know, uh, period from 65 to 67, I was at home. What are your memories of the wartime? Um, it's very intensive, you know, and scare people sometimes under the bombing. And actually, you know, I was working at the brigade repairing the road under the bombing. So at that time, you have only two ways. One way is to go on to work, and the other way maybe die. Do you have any, um, you know, looking back to that period, do you have any uh, thoughts about why the Vietnamese prevailed here and then the Americans were not successful? Yeah. One thing I, I, I think that uh, the Vietnamese prevailed because we, uh, we were fighting for independence. And that is not only with the United States, but with so many other countries, with France before, with Japan before that, and with Chinese before that. So it's, it looked like a tradition in Vietnam. And by that, I, I want to say that we have that purpose for a long, long time. And you cannot get that out of Vietnamese uh, very easy, no. Did you lose any family during the war? Uh, lucky, I, 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 I lost some of my relatives, my cousin and some, but my own family, you know. I have two, one brother and one sister, also joined the army, but they returned home safely. Do you have a family today? Yeah. You married? You have kids? Yes, I have uh, two kids, two boys, and they are grown up already. One is uh, 18, beginning university this year, and the other 16 at high school. Here in Hanoi? Yeah. What did you do in 1972 after you finished Cuban University? You know, I returned to the ministry, and I was assigned to the uh, department which uh, followed the uh, implementation of the Paris Agreement on, on Vietnam. My first job, you know, I remember very well at the early of 1973, we went out to the airport to receive Dr. Henry Kissinger, you know, to Hanoi that, uh, in, in, in January, I think, right after the bombing. But it was, you know, exciting. What did you think of Dr. Kissinger? Um, at that time, I was young, you know. I couldn't have a time to talk to him. Or, but uh, I remember very well that when his delegation visited a um, fine art uh, museum here in Hanoi, a crowd of people, you know, assembled around the museum, threatening to, to beat him. So we have to take him by the back door. Uh, my impression is that he is intelligent anyway. But uh, I don't know what is his you know, feeling now toward Vietnam. I hope that he should you know, uh, contribute to the reconciliation of relations between the two countries. When you met that delegation at the Hanoi airport, what was your job then? Interpreter. And they assigned me to take care of the pilot, <laughs> a group of pilots. The American pilots? Yes. Was there anybody in that delegation in 1973 that is still here, American delegation, that is still here in Vietnam? I don't know. I don't. Did you make any friends at the, in that group that you still know today? No, I don't. I don't. After the 1973 negotiations, what was your job? You know, I stayed with that department, you know, for almost uh, three years until 1975, after the uh, victory in the South. And then uh, I was sent to study again in Australia. 
at the Australian National University. I spent two years in that university to, uh, to, to take economics and history and everything. Now, the Australians were fighting on the American side in the war. Yeah. Was that difficult for you to go to Australia then, right after the war was over? It's not very difficult because at that time I understand that uh, in Australia they had the Labour government, you know, with uh, Dr. Whitlam, you know. And then they have the Colombo plan to aid Vietnam. Therefore, we were able to send, you know, many students to go to study in Australia in 75, 76, or 77. But after that, you have the um, the party of, uh, they call the country party or, of Mitchell Fraser, a liberal party or something. But still, the policy at that time, very good to Vietnam. Many of the Vietnamese studying at that time now are working in the high level now. How long have you been acting director of the America's Department? Uh, I've been in this job for nearly a year, maybe August last year. What do you spend most of your time doing? Uh, most of my time, I must say that only am I easy. You know, it make me you know, with the white hair every day. Some of the delegation come here uh, joking at me that last time we saw you and your hair is a little bit black, but now it's whiter. But then we have other things to do. The um, ODP program, the admiration program, the uh, re-education camp detainees program. And then uh, we've got a lot of American businessmen to come and uh, to uh, get to know about our market. So we got a lot of things to do. My, you know, department is uh, about 10 or 15 people and before, now we got nearly 40 staff members. Go back to the MIA program. What's the biggest unsolved issue right now on the missing in action POW issue? Uh, according to my knowledge and my experience, I don't think that anything unsolved because, you know, with the uh, POW, we sent all of them back to the United States in 1973 after the signing of the Paris Agreement on Vietnam.